I feel I've grown in my captaincy and leadership over the last five years and starting to feel a lot more comfortable in the role. For us it's sort of about trying to build a culture that's going to be sustainable and a culture that you know, is a premiership standard. Putting on an Essendon jumper at VFLW level should feel as special it is to put an Essendon jumper on at AFL level. Well, I think diversity of any kind is only going to improve your program. From the start, Essendon's been really bullish and really proud of the commitment they've made to women's football. I think we've all come back hungry and um, more excited to be part of the group and we're certainly uh, fired up for a season to get going. Can you hold this up? JC? Are we on this ground today? Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Because we're playing on this one, is that why? <laughs> All right, it's a shorter session tonight a little bit lower intensity, but we have to make sure that we still do all the preparation as if it's starting it for a game. All right, so make sure you're concentrating for your activation, make sure you're taking all the steps you need to do, because now we're trying to replicate what we're going to do in two weeks' time when round one comes. But it's on you to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. You can show your teammates, the coaches and the club something that they get really excited about, which will put your name in contention for round one. Nothing is set in stone. It's a brand new season. It's really exciting. But we're all here to earn that round one spot from coaches to staff to players. All right? We've had a really great pre-season. It's really freaking exciting to be playing games. All right, but we've got to earn that spot. So let's go tonight, let's go. So this pre-season has been, you know, a whole new ball game for all of us. So coming out of COVID, coming out of lockdown, basically as soon as we got the call that we were able to start training again, we started. The main focus for us over the first six weeks was allowing the players to basically get into condition to train again. So an athlete's ability to be competitive is, is a learnt skill. Some people, you know, you're born with different levels of it. But that ability to put your body on the line, to take physical contact, to get up and give continuous hard effort, um, that's something that we've really had to sort of develop again and bring back into and remind people that, you know, we're in a competitive environment and a combative environment and we've got to get our bodies used to that and our minds used to that really quickly. Obviously there was a huge amount of disappointment without not getting a season going last year and I think we've all come back probably more hungry and um, more excited to be part of the group and yeah I think we're seeing that in, in how we've been training and there's a, a lot of energy and, and people are just happy to be here. I, I think we don't take it for granted anymore and yeah we're, we're so, certainly uh, fired up for yeah, a season to get going. Keep the ball. Get as many handles as you can stand inside the circle. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. There's a lot of hope heading into 2021 for the whole squad and the, and the coaching group. We think from the first year to the second year we showed the development of the program, the development of the, the coaches and the, and the staff and the playing group that we could sort of evolve as the season went on. So we started the second season competitive but we weren't winning games and then after, you know, after the halfway point of the year we really got some things right and became really competitive in a really strong um, group as a whole. Realistically, we should be aiming for finals. We weren't far off it last season and we really only narrowly missed out in the end. So I think anything less than that we'll be disappointed in. And it's very hard to know how any of the teams are looking this year because it's been so disrupted. But having trained together solidly for a good few months now, I think uh, we'll be really well placed to do well this season. A lot of people think the stereotypical leader is someone that always has something to say and that is, it's always about telling other people what to do, whereas Georgia is very much a lead by example leader and a lead by example person. So when the pressure's on, she acts exactly the same as she always does, which is a fantastic quality in a leader. It's pretty humbling, I think, to, to be named captain, um, particularly from a player's vote, and to know that your teammates think that of you. I feel very proud of the achievement, and I'm just looking forward to the, the challenge um, that it will bring. 
She has genuine care for her teammates, has genuine time for her teammates and her coaches. And I think she'll be a fantastic leader for our um, football club going forward. I feel that I have a good balance with, with how I go about things now. I've probably in the past, I've been very serious about the sport that I play and, and I still am a very focused person. And, and when I need to switch on, I switch on. Um, but I also want to bring a bit of that fun because in the end we're here to enjoy what we do and uh, I want to bring a bit of that balance to the group. Yes. 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 So a couple of moments just to wind down a bit now, then we'll come out with we're all about the club first, so we have a club first, team second, individual third mentality and we need that to be personified by our leaders and we think we have a leadership group that will reflect that. Yeah, we've gone with a, a leadership group of five, so myself as captain and Courtney Eagle as vice-captain. Obviously she brings a lot of experience as a leader to the group, uh, being captain in our 2019 season. She's a great bringer of energy, she creates a great vibe and has a great relationship with all the girls and I'll be leaning on her quite a bit this season. We've got Mia Ray Clifford, she's new to Essendon, uh, having great experience from a, a number of AFLW clubs. So she's been excellent coming into our group. She's got great voice around the group. She, she's helping the young forward line with their structure and, and, and their talk in there. So she's an excellent addition to, to our group. Got Kendra, who not a new face to the leadership group. Uh, she's been there the last couple of seasons. An incredibly hard worker uh, amongst the group and, and creates a great vibe and brings a lot of talk as well. And then we've got Aloise Ashley Cooper, who's new to the leadership group as well. Being the youngest in the group, I think we see her as very much a, a leader of the future. And for her to already be in that position, I think will be a great learning experience for her. And I think uh, she'll run with that opportunity and and it'll take her game to the next level. I think you hear a lot of people talk about diversity and different ways of doing things and having diff people from different backgrounds. Certainly firsthand from Melbourne, what I saw was getting people coming in, uh, involved in the AFLW program, have had different backgrounds. They just provide a different perspective on things. And also the players, you know, the players being able to talk to each other, you know, the women's program with the men's, you know, some of these um, people who are playing AFLW are working full time and they're, they're balancing that with playing AFLW. I think the more they can share their stories, uh, it's just to make our male players more appreciative of probably what they've got. And I think also from the other end, it's just for the girls to be speaking to the guys and just talk about you know, another level of professionalism. Um, they can learn just little things about training, they can learn little things about body work that you know, the, the male players and the people in the AFL environment um, are just doing day to day and don't even know that they're doing it. So. You know, the crossover of both programs is really important. Um, we're going to try and do it already with our VFL and VFLW programs to really get used to um, being sort of three teams in one club. Well, I think diversity of any kind is only going to improve your program. So it's going to improve your club, it's going to improve your culture, it's going to improve your communication styles. You're going to steal ideas, coaching tips, leadership tips, team dynamics. We can learn all these things from each other's programs. From a VFLW program, you know, what Charlotte Miller runs and with Brendan Major coaching that team, I'm really impressed by that program. They obviously got the girls for limited time, but the way that's, that program's developed uh, over a number of years now, and you can still really see now it coming out and it's really well run, it's, it's very professional. I think the culture down there, the girls, uh, uh, you can hear it in the way they train, the way they talk about it. They're really excited and proud of what they've been able to build at Essendon VFLW team and they're excited about the season ahead. Coming into this season, there's always going to be changes within football departments broadly. So to see someone like Josh come in and take such a hands-on approach and investment in our program has been fantastic and the players have really noticed and the staff have really noticed. So he comes down to trainings, um, we frequently chat about coaching development, about player development, and about how the program can develop as a whole. And that really gives us a, a strong guiding path for us to work into because there's so much experience that he brings from the men's program and from the Melbourne AFLW program. To have someone that's been there and done it and set up a successful program, they're a successful club, they're really, really competitive at the top level and they have a great team culture um, and dynamic. So that's something that we will draw on when we, when we push forward. I think uh, it's a cer certainly a very exciting time for Essendon and, and with the new facilities at the hangar as well. Um, it's, it's a great time to be involved in the club. Um, obviously we do have hopes of AFLW and to, to try to um, create a really professional look for our, our team and for the club as well. Uh, I hope that I'm able to add to that yeah, as we enter a really exciting period for us. The better your facilities are, 
the, the more experience you have with football, the more experience your staff have with football, the more time you spend together as a program, it's only gonna get better and better. So this is a facility that we can grow into as a playing group. This is a facility we can grow into as a staffing group. And what that does is it sets us up really, really well for when the, the level goes up, for when we become an AFLW program, because this is AFLW standard. I think the, the um, easy thing to say is we'd love to have an AFLW team. I've seen firsthand how it can improve the club um, and how important it is to the club. I actually, it's strange being in a club without an AFLW licence because I'm just used to um, having those teams together and the, the interaction you can get from it and the, and the benefits that helps with both programs. You know, in terms of what the goal is, ultimately we'd love to have both a VFLW team and an AFLW team and I think that would be um, you know, great for Essendon Football Club to experience. Yeah, I think Essendon's obviously had a, a great history in the men's side of the game. I think now, um, with the introduction of our, our VFLW program a couple of years ago, I think it's going to provide a fantastic opportunity um, for those girls to come through and, and to develop and, uh, I guess, improve as you would if you're a, a male athlete as well. So, um, I guess since Marnes has come in as the new GM of footy, he's been really big on being sort of a three-team club and not just a one, one footy club organisation. And, I think as it grows and, and gets more support and resources behind it, uh, I think it's going to be something that fans will love. And um, you know, as, as players of the AFL side, I think we will look to connect more with VFL men's and VFL women's as we go forward. Um, obviously a bit difficult with COVID at the moment, but I think when we get more access to that, it's going to be awesome. And hopefully obviously in the future, we'll get an AFLW team as well and uh, really grow that support behind them as well. Yeah, we're putting on an Essendon jumper at VFLW level should feel as special as it is to put an Essendon jumper on at AFL level. And that's how we want the, the girls to be feeling. Uh, they have to have access to the environment, access to the facility, feel like they can come in here at any stage. To have um, you know, some AFL players going down to VFLW training or to have the whole club supporting a VFLW game, um, no doubt it gives, gives the girls a buzz and, and lifts them about uh, how much they feel that they're worthwhile within the club. This is a great opportunity for us to start fresh, make this a place that other teams don't want to come, right? make it a bit of a fortress for us. It seems a bit cliche, but that's what the opportunity for us um, is today. We pride ourselves on being a hard running, hard tackling team. That's all that we can ask is that we do that at every occasion. Let's have fun. I know I had a heap of fun last week and that's because we did those things. We're not going to enjoy it if we don't tick off those boxes. All right, but if we do, we know we're going to go a long way to winning and we're going to have a great time. One of ours is on the ground, grab their jump up, pull them up. You know, we have a really great team, we have a really great culture, but the love and respect we have for one another, I think outweighs a lot of that and let's make sure we bring that onto the field today. Talking is done. Talking is what I get to do, acting is what you get to do. Right? Your role playing it is all about action and it's all about building something that is bigger than yourself. You're doing it, you've been doing it, and you've been doing it well. Let's go and show them. Come on.
um, as Mage says, the scoreboard is not what counts, it's how we play and I think that second half we showed some not just good, really good football but really good character as well. Heads held high and let's recover well and um, yeah, prepare for next week. Um, how are we feeling about the potential of five days in lockdown? Anything that's sort of going through your heads, if you've even heard about it. Ritz, what's the first thing? Did you hear about it? What's the first thing that went through your head? Oh, a bit frustrated. Yeah. Uh, sort of, you know, like we're back in the same sort of situation as last year again, so it's a bit annoying, but... Yeah. Cool. Doing a bit better this time. Anyone else? What about you, guys? Yeah, frustration again. Thank you, Ned. Um, just hoping it's just the five days. Yep. It doesn't have to extend anymore. Same way as last year, so. It's going to be one of those years, though, isn't it? Oh, there's always hurdles and things along the way we have to overcome and challenges and obstacles. But this year, I think there's going to be yeah, more random ones on the back of last year as well. But I think the groundwork we've done here about getting really clear on who we are and what we do. Okay, it's really going to be a real opportunity for us to be able to use that as a real strength and a weapon for us. Whatever happens, we're going to have to go through it. And so is every club. Well, it's a nice time to have the first conversation we had at the start of pre-season. It's all about the quality of what we do and how well we use our time in comparison to other times. Everyone's got the same amount of time to prepare. If this happens, we're going to a five-day lockdown in Melbourne. Ten other teams are going to be doing the same thing. And it will happen. But if we want to make excuses and justify and blame and come up with lots of reasons why we can't be their best, lose our momentum, just come back from injury, plenty of things we can go down. That list is, ooh, you can go down that forever. But we've got an opportunity now to be able to take ownership and responsibility for what we're doing. We're all leaders individually in that battle um, as a group here. Right, so we're going to have an opportunity, plenty of opportunities throughout the year. Whether it be selection, whether it be injury, whether it be COVID restrictions, whether it be hubs, how can we use opportunities for us to learn, get better, okay, that same attitude for us. It's definitely been a lot of change in coaching since I've been at the club, walking in with, with Bomber and Herdy, that situation, then into, into Wusher and now Truck. I think Truck's been able to really streamline the program and the schedule and be really clear with the players and what he expects as a senior coach. And I think the players have really sort of grown to line there with him and, and brought into everything he's, he's brought to the table. So I think he's, his first month or two as senior coach, officially, I guess, he's brought a really good sense of connection back to our past and celebrating, I guess, our history as a club and I guess inducting us as players and staff into what it means to be an Essendon person. And that's been something I think everyone's really enjoyed and uh, I certainly have personally. Yeah, you know, I've loved the way he's, he's approached his coaching. You know, I think it's built off the back of the relationships and the care that he has for the playing group. I love how he's tying in the connection between how Essendon itself was formed, our past players, not seeing our success as a footy club as a burden in the past. He's really you know, trying to spur up the past and you know, really align us to what Essendon was built from. We're a pretty win-loss driven industry, but for us it's sort of about trying to build a culture that's going to be sustainable and a culture that you know, is a premiership standard. You don't win a premiership and then build a culture. I think we're trying to build something internally and lean on our past and our history as well. Turning people, you know, where people are at right now into where they could potentially be is, is the biggest challenge for any club and that's got to be really our focus and our focus has to be on developing our players and developing our staff to, to get to a, the levels they can get to. But also I think that our more senior blokes, uh, players have a lot of development left in them as well and uh, we're already seeing that in, in pre-season. They're really driving each other to get better uh, all the time and our leaders are doing a terrific job in doing that. But I think that's really our opportunity, is that to continue to drive the high standards and that the players are really um, taking that and doing it themselves. We've got a, an awesome core group of boys that are driving the club forward. So much uh, experience now with a, a core group of blokes that are in that sort of 50 to 100 games played. You know, it makes my job a hell of a lot easier when we've got you know majority of the list really pushing the club forward and driving those standards, keeping each other accountable. I think the important part when choosing a leadership group is to, to identify what are they actually here to do and what is their purpose and, and really we want the best people that want to display the Eston way of doing things and that's 
was how the selection process was, was utilised, was to utilise what are the, the values we stand for as a footy club, how do we want to play as a footy club and who are the players that do that to the best capabilities. I know we had the win but what f***ing kept us in that or what that made us f***ing dominate that quarter, That's, we set the ground up really, really well, okay? Some great composure with the ball, alright, when we turned it over, one thing I will, I will say, just when we do get those quick ones, let's not have blind shots on goal. Just wait for our forwards to reset, slow it down a bit. We're actually getting some great one-on-one -on -one looks down the line, so let's keep using it. Yeah, Dyson, he sort of was my mentor from day one, uh, almost eight years ago. So, um, you know, he's someone that I, I really idolise, I guess, as a teenager watching AFL footy. He's a super player individually, but it wasn't so I sort of got to the club, I realised sort of the leader that he was and the role model he was for all his teammates as well. So we've obviously built a really strong relationship over seven or eight years of playing together and, and being mates off the field as well. And I think he's got a, a really rare ability to be very talented and skilled in most aspects of leadership. It's probably the only person I've come across in sport that is very good in, in sort of all areas across you know, being a very good speaker. He's motivating for his teammates, but also performs and has a very high standard off the field as well. Oh, firstly, from an outsider, from Dyson Hebel, I haven't seen him on the, on the field much to, uh, to see his leadership on the field, but you know, every time I've heard him speak publicly, he always speaks about Essendon, he speaks about the club and the club being first. As a person, obviously he's been through some really frustrating times with injury and, and as a leader all you want to do, and particularly as a captain of a club, you just want to be out in the field. You just want to be helping the club to win games of footy and helping you know, the player next to you get better. So I know that's been frustrating for them over a number of years and I think we're going to just see his, his captaincy go to another level and flourish because of you know, that opportunity to just be on the ground uh, with his teammates. Going through a situation like that with numerous injuries and you know, not being right in amongst it with the playing group, I think um, it's given me a lot of gratitude and, and joy for um, a healthy body and being able to train, um, train freely, play freely. So you know, I've got a, a bit of a different perspective on, on footy itself now as well. Um, and that's freed me up a bit, I think, just to, 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 to enjoy my time, enjoy my leadership and try and help drive this club forward. And how close that success is, I don't know, but certainly know we're doing the right things and we're on the right track to get there. Got some new guys into the leadership group as well with Andy McGrath as a young developing uh, player, only still new in his uh, AFL career, but to see the way he acts and behaves out in the training track, uh, the young players that he already adopts and, and helps you know, introduce them to AFL footy, he's got great traits to be a leader. We've got Pidgey in there now too, and uh, he's just developed tremendously over the years. He's been such a strong leader since day one, and you've seen the respect he's earned from his teammates, members, fans, etc. He's, uh, he's been tremendous. Yeah, since Andy walked in the, in the door day one, we sort of could see straight away that he was going to be you know, a future leader of the club. Obviously, didn't want to fast track him too much and put him in the deep end, but I think he, he naturally goes into that deep end. He's, he's He's a really good kid, he's someone who's got a lot of talent but backs it up with a lot of hard working and, and moving forward I think he's just going to continue to grow on and off the field which is awesome. And have Zach Merritt uh, back in the leadership group as well. What I've found already with, with Zach, he just wants to be the best player he can be and best person he can be. It's the way he goes about his training, he trains with serious intensity and then you know, I know he's done courses in leadership, he's always asking for feedback. Obviously Junior, he's just awesome. He's, uh, I don't think I've ever seen someone work as hard as he does on his game. He's had a lot of areas that he's needed to improve on in terms of um, leadership and whatnot. He takes it in his stride, goes away, works on it, doesn't solve, doesn't sob. He's, he's just, you know, owns that feedback and away he goes. Come back a, an amazing leader this year. Growing up or getting into the club, you want to be, you think you, can, you need to be the best leader in every aspect as I'm sort of learning and still learning. Probably my leadership is more ability to, to perform and to, to set the standard for my teammates sort of at the club and, and on game day. And um, I think I'm more of a sort of one-on-one -on -one leader behind closed doors. I'm not the most extroverted person. Um, I think I bounce off really well with, with Dyson and Andy McGrath, who are a bit more extroverted and, and really good speakers. So I think we sort of complement each other reasonably well. We've seen his development on field, so that speaks for himself, for itself. But I think his ability to cut through to the majority of the playing group from a, a first year guy walking in the door to you know a, a guy who's in their last couple of years of footy, um, I think it's really impressive. He's able to drive tremendously high standards and sometimes you know that can eat away at him because he wants everyone to be at that level as well and he's just so hungry for success so he's managed to find that balance of understanding where guys are at and then helping them develop, you know, sitting down with them, showing them edits. I know he's, he's certainly played a big part in um, Dust Parish's development 
development, also Pidge McGrath. So he's uh, been awesome in really diving into that young core group of boys and you know helping them develop and grow as well. Obviously, Michael Hurley was the was the fourth uh, person in that leadership group, and again, I'm only talking from small samples, but he just has got genuine care for this football club, and he's always thinking um, team first and the club first, which are, again, really important aspects of, of any leader. Hills has been, a, you know, he's rock solid um, right throughout his career. The care that he shows for his teammates is, you know, inspiring, something that I look up to as well, and um, he's just a, such a genuine bloke. Love having him right beside me and have her as a sort of a caring leader as well behind closed doors is also quite helpful for, for myself but the other two as well. To have a smaller group, uh, four, but it's a really diverse group and I think it's, uh, it's an exciting group to, to lead our playing group. <laughs> well, you knew this. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you guys, Boys, when you got your jumper, um, boys, I think we've got uh, six lads that haven't donned the sash with the boys today. Can I get you just to take a little step forward, please? Good. Just a, a sign of recognition, lads, that now uh, the importance of this jumper, yeah? So for the first time, we're competing against opposition, and you're now part of us, all right? So you've uh, proven uh, what you can do throughout this pre-season and thoroughly deserve your spot today. Um, and just knowing that we're all behind you. So just play with freedom, play with your own natural flair. Uh, if you make mistakes, you make errors, butter up and go again, we'll tap you up, tap you on the ass and keep going. Uh, we've had a look at the DNA, um, what Essendon was formed from, not only uh, the footy club, but as a suburb, blue collar workers that are hard working. And it all started with just discipline, okay? And that's what we're building our DNA off. Discipline, hard working, and we become dependable from the back of that, okay? This is another opportunity to grow and learn. I've loved the, the way we've worked throughout this summer and we're starting to see it come out, not only in training, in our intra club, now it's time to compete against some real opposition and I'm excited, all right? Yeah, Here we go, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Let's enjoy it. Oh, let's go, Bombers. Oh, yeah. yeah, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. I think the, the first pracky, you know, that was a, a nice little bit of a nervous excitement that you get before playing some proper opposition. Um, it was nice to have a good hit out. You know, for myself, it was unreal just to be able to go and play without other things on your mind body-wise. So really enjoyed that uh, new challenge, playing a new role off halfback and uh, continuing to learn as much as I can and grow in that role as well. Got a great group of boys around me to to uh, help support that too, so take some great learnings from it and um, hopefully implement them throughout the coming weeks and should be in a really strong position come round one. Um, 
really good part of our prep. Okay, I thought it was really pleased with the way we attacked it. Okay, it's an opportunity again for us to get better. Well, that's what we need to see and treat these next two weeks. Okay, and moving into the season, but all it is for us is an opportunity for us to be able to keep getting better. Okay, we'll, we'll, we will review that really well, okay, individually and as a group, and prioritise what's going to be most important for us. Okay, but really pleased with the way we attacked it, accepted the conditions against a different opponent. Okay, it's really good for us and part of our progression. Okay, so we've got what, nine days now into Saturday against Geelong. Okay, so look after yourselves, use the prep. Um, Appropriately, I'll right, make sure we just keep keep turning up. Whenever we turn up to the club, how are we going to get better? Okay, individually and as a group. Okay, good stuff, boys.